So, you want to create a squad map, and I'm here to help. So, in this considerably delayed episode, we're going to be talking about landscape splines, which is something that I hear asked about quite often. So I figured I would do an episode about what they are and how to use them. So landscape splines are incredibly useful, and they're in pretty much every level in squad, and you'll be using them at some point or another, no matter what you're doing. Basically, landscape splines are roads, or they're fences, or they're railroad tracks. Any long curved object that needs to follow a path will use landscape splines. They're very useful for this because not only do they allow you to make meshes that curve around a path, they also allow you to deform the landscape to that path so that way everything matches up correctly. So, just to start off, you're going to need to know how to get to this menu, which is the splines menu. The way you do this is, you go to your modes window, you go to the landscape tab, and then in the manage tab, there's a drop down that you need to click, and as long as you have a landscape in your level, you should be able to click this edit splines button. Now this gets you to where you need to be, You'll notice that there isn't much here, but that's okay because most of the stuff we'll be using is in the details panel. So, we're just going to be creating a small dirt path that goes up this hill, and I'll show you how to use the splines by doing that. But first, we should probably understand exactly how the placing and connecting of splines works. So, to uh, place a spline, we're going to have this open and selected, and then we're just going to control click on the landscape. And that creates a very large spline by default. You'll notice that if we control click again to place another uh, connected spline point, it's huge. It's massive. That's a house. This is the spline. It's big. So I'm just going to delete that and select the first one. And I'm going to change the width here in the details panel, make sure you have control points selected, to be 150. And that's much better. Uh, I'm also going to change the side fall off, which is these dotted lines here, to about 750 and the end fall to about 300 and you'll notice that now when we place another one it's a much more manageable size and the fall off is a little smaller we still want to keep the fall off a reasonable distance because that's going to affect our deformation later um, but this looks good so let's just go over some of the basic functions of how splines work and how you can place them um, I'm just going to create another spline here and apply the same settings to it and this is going to allow us to demonstrate one of the very useful functions of the uh, spline editor. If we select one of these spline points and then control click on a different spline point, it connects them. This works for any two spline points, and if they're different sizes, it'll just, you know, interpolate between the sizes in between them. Um, we can also click on the segments in between, and if we want to, we can just delete them with the delete key. Um, Another uh, pretty useful thing is that if you control click anywhere on one of these segments, it splits the segment and creates a new point that you can then edit. If you want to, you can sorry about that. You can uh, recalculate the spline points by selecting them and pressing R, and then this will make them so that way they uh, have the correct curvature for whatever they have. So in this case. If we have something like this, and then let's say we mess with this, or with this a little bit, we can just select all of these by going to control points and select all, press R, and it recalculates it for us nicely. You can also press T to flip the tangents on them, which won't really do anything that you can see here. Um, that's more for uh, the sharpness of stuff. So. Oh. One moment. Uh, so if you have one of these like this, and you're messing with the tangents on the segments, flipping the tangents will, in theory, uh, kind of change the way the mesh rotates. But I don't use it very much. You can also flip the splines, the spline segments with F. Um, you'll notice that something is changing, but that won't be noticeable until we have a mesh on here. So, in that case, let's get a mesh on. So this is another point that I see a lot of people confused about. People try to add a mesh by selecting their control points and going down to mesh and adding a mesh. That's not how you do it. Um, all that does is it makes a mesh spawn at each of these control points and they don't connect, they just kind of spawn there and sit there. I'm not really sure why that exists, but it does. 
what you're going to want to do instead is select all segments and then go down to spline meshes and add one. Now this is the mesh you're going to want to mess with. So I'm just going to add a mesh that I have and you'll see here it's a little dirt road with some color tweaks. Um, and if we go back to flipping our meshes now you'll probably notice that they actually do flip. It's kinda hard to tell with the road but if you're using a directional mesh that has like a texture on it it'll be a lot easier to tell. Um, another nice shortcut and the last one before we move on is the end key. It's right next to your delete key on your keyboard most likely and when you press it while you have a point selected it snaps it to the landscape which can be very useful when you're editing the splines manually like say you're moving it around and uh, it ends up getting a little bit off the landscape and it's floating just press end and it'll snap down the landscape very useful so with that out of the way let's just real click place some splines on this little path that we want to place and then I'll talk about terrain deformation so let me just do that real quick and I'm just gonna put a little winding path up here right up to the top and then I'm just gonna make sure that this lines up well with the road in front of it and I'm gonna turn my grid snap off because that shouldn't be on alright so that's about the path that I want here now this is where we get into the landscape deformation but before we do that make sure that you have your segments all selected not your control points your control points won't do anything for this and make sure that the only select segments you have are the ones that you want to deform the landscape to now what you're going to want to do is make sure that these two boxes are checked um, all they do is if this one's checked it raises the terrain up to the spline and if this one's checked it lowers it down pretty self-explanatory if they're not checked it won't do that the layer name is actually really nifty um, we can go to our paint menu and find the layer that we want underneath the spline. Let's say soil. And then we can go back, select all these segments, and then just type in soil. And now, whenever we apply this, there will be soil underneath the spline. So let's go ahead and do that. The way we apply it to the landscape is, uh, we don't click the All Splines button. We make sure that we're only clicking the Only Selected button. Um, if we click the all splines it'll apply every single spline in the entire level and I have splines here that I don't want to apply or that I've already edited after applying so if you apply them all at once it might mess up some stuff that you've done so just only do that if you know what you're doing so we're just gonna click only selected and there you have it you'll notice that it now has dirt underneath it soil and if you look closely you'll see that it deformed the terrain to the spline um, very useful. Now, you will notice that there's a bunch of grass floating because the grass didn't update when the landscape did. And there's a very simple workaround for this. You're just going to grab your content browser, you're going to go to your grass types where you have, you have those stored, and then just open one, find a checkbox, and then uncheck it and recheck it. And that's all you need to do. You can put your content browser back and you'll notice that the grass updates to where it should be. You just had to refresh it so that way it regenerated it because unlike actually manually editing it, when you click that button it doesn't actually update the grass. So now we have that, I'm just gonna real quick go and add that same mesh that we had earlier and you'll notice, if I deselect that, that we now have a path that nicely hugs the ground all the way up our hill. Uh, that's pretty much how this goes. Um, there's not a whole lot else that you need to know about splines. They're extremely useful uh, for what you uh, what you need them for. So like roads, here I have them for fences and I had train tracks over there. Uh, they're in pretty much every squad map. Now a couple other things that you can do with them is, let's say I don't want this to look like a miniature dirt road well now that I've applied it I can just select all the control points delete them 
And now I have a perfectly good flat area for me to, uh, maybe I'll edit the painting on a little bit. I might paint over this with grass again and then come back and manually detail it. But they actually, they work pretty well for that. You can use them kind of like a, uh, kind of like the ramp tool in the sculpting tools, um, but a little bit different. Now I can just come back and manually paint all this in, and they work quite well for that too. So, I hope you learned something, and thank you for watching.